Hi, I'm Otto Penzler. I'm in the Mysterious Bookshop. And this is uh, our, my weekly little talk about collecting mystery fiction. Uh, today we're going to do something a little bit different. I, what I've been doing is uh, a single author each week. Uh, I've been showing the rare books as well as more common books, trying to show autographs, uh, trying to show on copyright pages how to tell first editions and so on. Today I'm going to just do something a little bit different. This is just for fun. Um, we talk about oddities in, in the world of mystery publishing. I'm going to show you some, something that is a little bit, that most of you are unlikely to have ever seen. Jigsaw puzzles. By Whose Hand. The Dream Murder. And three of them. These are actually pretty rare. Uh, you, you wouldn't know that they're rare by having me pull out three of them, but they are. And what these are, are short stories published in a little pamphlet, uh, I think it's 12 pages, um, very, very short, yeah, whatever, uh, 12 or 16 pages, and it tells a story and it doesn't give you the solution. The solution happens when you put the puzzle, the jigsaw puzzle together, and then you'll see who did it, the murder method, all of the questions that you had in the beginning. Uh, th these are these were done in the 1930s, um, and they're very hard to find in decent shape. These boxes uh, are are kind of fragile. Usually, the corners or or the the uh, the edges are crushed or broken, and so on. These are in remarkable uh, condition. Uh, they're about 275. $275 each. <clears throat> Another thing that was popular also in the 1930s were dossiers. So what these would be is a mystery story told in almost entirely dossier form. It would have letters bound in get the story going, handwritten documents and so on, maps, all the things that make up a mystery story, which are usually described uh, in prose, but here it shows in actual pieces of uh, material. Here's a telegram for, for those of you who remember what telegrams are, bound into the book. But even more than that, I will find exactly what I'm looking for in one minute. Newspaper clippings. I, I will find it, I promise you. Bear with me a second. I want to show you how cool this is. There's photograph, real photographs bound in. Well, there's a carbon piece of carbon paper. Remember what carbon paper is? So this was started by somebody named uh, Dennis Wheatley, who is a thriller writer, who would do these written with uh, J.G. Lynx. Wheatley would essentially create the story, and then Lynx would plan uh, all of the pieces of information that are included in here, uh, in, in this dossier, so that you can uh, follow the crime. Uh, this was very popular in the... In well, the what were uh, you looking for? Well, there's, uh, what I'm looking for is what I will show you in this one. Ah. Here's another one. <clears throat> this is a crime file. It's not quite the same thing. It's not the same series, but it's the same uh, notion. This is called a, a crime file rather than a dossier. And bound in, were things like confetti that was found near the body, uh, cigar ash, all of these things in little envelopes, a button, a button found in the doorway. That's, that's a button, it's hard to see because it's white on white. Uh, and this is cigar ash in this one. Um, so these are, and then again, of course, photographs bound in, you know, this sort of thing, telegrams, letters, um, 
police things from a police station. Um, and if you follow, if you read all of these bits and pieces as you go through, uh, here's an actual envelope bound in. You can uh, follow the the investigation. Um, these are these are pretty rare uh, to find complete uh, with covers and uh, with with the, with the things that were bound in. Um, this is not a very great copy, uh, so it's it's a hundred dollars. Here's the same the same one, but in really fine condition, and it's two hundred and seventy five dollars. So uh, condition matters for these books as well as uh, as well as it does for other books. <clears throat> Here's a different one. This is also in the same series as this, um, but this one is in hard cover. And I don't, I, I think several of them were published both in paperback and in hardcover. They're so uncommon that uh, I don't have a huge file to compare them to on a regular basis, but it was the same principle. And here, here's some stuff that's, that's been bound into this one. You can imagine how time consuming it was for a publisher to put all of these things together. This is a sample of powder found on uh, Claudia Craig's dress. We don't know if it's the exact same powder, but they, it claims to be. Um, so yeah, so here's, this is, and look at the condition of this. I actually have two of these, which is really unusual, especially in such beautiful condition. These are all from the 1930s. Um, the dossiers, this, th these by, uh, not that, sorry. These, the Dennis Wheatley dossiers, there were four of them, and they were reissued in the 70s, um, and they're fairly common, uh, but they don't have all that material bound in. They, it'll have like, photographs of, that same, of the same clues that were actually bound into this. Uh, I don't think, in the 30s, you could probably get workers to do that um, and make it worthwhile, but by the time we get to the 70s, late 70s, <clears throat> it, uh, it was just too expensive to do. Here's a different uh, kind of oddity. It's called photo crimes. And what, what these would be is they would show you the murder case with all of the photos with captions that will tell you what's going on. And then the challenge was, would be for you as the reader to solve the, the case, looking at all of the, the crime scene photos. This is also quite rare, uh, not a very nice copy, I'm afraid, but it's the, it's the only time I've had one in a dust jacket. Uh, it, it does show up like this uh, in the cloth, but seldom does it have a, a dust jacket. And then this was reissued. And here's the modern version of it. Solve them yourself, photo crimes. And again, there are the photos. It's different, differently laid out now, uh, but the same principle, color inside to make it a little bit more elaborate. Uh, but these, this can be found uh, with some regularity. Um, this is a reprint. I, don't, I, I usually have first editions of the Baffle book because these were so popular that, uh, that I usually have copies around and I've always found them so charming. It, what, what they are is essentially a two or three page story and offers, offers clues, and then, well, maybe a little more than two or three pages, four or five pages, I guess. Uh, and then you are uh, challenged to, uh, to solve the crime. You have all the information that you need, and then at the back of the book are the solutions. <clears throat> this is just a, a brand new reprint. These are available, and they're so much fun if you like to test your own abilities, because they're, they're done very fairly. And these were, again, 1930s, 30, 31, 32, I think. There were three of them, um, and uh, they're, they're great fun. And they're, they were done in very large quantities because they were so popular. And now somebody, some clever publisher decided, let's do those, and, and did. Now this is, this is just too, so weird. It doesn't really fit in with the whole puzzle thing, but I just have to show it. 
uh, because it's so unusual. Look at this. Beautiful, colorful covers. But you know what these are? These are, these are ads. These are commercial giveaways by a tailor, J.L. Taylor, who happens to be a tailor. And he's promoting his tailor shop. And there you have him on the back cover. It says, there is no mystery about tailor tailoring. <laughs> Anyone can see their merits. And this one says, for high-class tailor tailoring, the trail leads here, provided the address. And these are so rare. It's the, um, the mystery, it's the mysterious Q. And this is number one. This is number two. And in the great bibliography, uh, Alan J. Hubin wrote a bibliography that is the most amazing piece of scholarship in the, in the world of mystery fiction. It lists every book from 1749 up to whatever edition that was. The most recent was uh, 2000. It came out in about 2004, so it was every book up to 2000. And he lists the author, the title, the, uh, the publisher, the, uh, the city, the uh, location in many cases, the series detective, these are all in the human bibliography. But he only listed one, and it was called The, uh, the, My the Mysterious Q, and he didn't give it a number, and he, but he only had one, and it was neither of these titles. So I don't know how many there were. Um, I have the first two, but those are, that's all, all I've seen. So this is some weird stuff in the world of mystery fiction. I hope you liked it. Thanks for watching.